Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Today we are going to talk about notation. In particular, you may have remembered from the previous video that we had a couple of weird symbols in one of our definitions. Greek letters, to be precise. I know, nobody expected, nobody told you that you would have to learn Greek in order to do logic, but I will tell you, it's just the alphabet that you need to learn. You don't need to actually know anything about the language. The best place to go if you're going to be practicing the Greek alphabet is just head over to Wikipedia, put Greek alphabet in, and look at the list of characters there. Practice writing them now because it will make your life a lot easier when it comes to later videos and you're trying to take notes and you want to have a complete record, or if you're reading through the textbook and you want to know, what is this symbol? How do I say it? I'm telling all my friends about this cool stuff that I am learning. What do they call, what do I call them? But because I promised you a video on notation, and trust me, this won't be the last video on notation that you get. We have awkward signs. These are the letters of the Greek alphabet. We have what they are called in English and how they are written. So alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta. Now, you'll notice that a lot of the uppercase letters look a lot like the Roman alphabet. That won't help you at all, because the ones that look like Roman letters, we probably won't be using very much of. So, gamma doesn't look like a Roman letter, one that we'll use. Same with delta. But like, alpha, beta, epsilon, don't even bother learning them, we won't be using them. When it, when it comes to the lowercase ones, though, you'll see that there are quite a few that don't look like Latin characters. These are the ones that we are going to use, because if there's one thing that we will learn during the course of these videos, it's that there are just not enough letters in the Latin alphabet. That's why we have to go to Greek. In cases of deep duress, we might even go to Hebrew. Don't worry, that will come in quite a while. So there's the first part of the alphabet. There's the next bit. Eta, theta, iota, kappa, Lambda, mu, nu, page three, c, omicron, p, or pi, depending on which you like better, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, and then the logician's best friend, phi. Chi is also used fairly commonly, as is psi, so if you really want to start practicing your notation, these are the letters that you want to be able to write. You will need to be able to write them as quickly as you can write any of the Latin alphabet, so pretend you're back in reception and start writing these now. Omega is also a commonly used one, but these four, th these three, those are the important ones. Now, what are we going to use these for? In the previous video, when we were talking about the definition of argument, an argument simply being a set of sentences and another sentence, we call the sentences in the set, the premises, and the other sentence, the conclusion, you'll notice that, you'll remember that we had gamma, capital gamma, to indicate the set, and we used phi, with subscripts, one, two, three, etc., to represent individual sentences. Later on, we will actually be using things like phi and psi and chi to represent individual formulas, something that we will be defining later on. And again, even with the Greek alphabet, we don't have enough letters, which is why sometimes we'll put subscripts on them to indicate, okay, we've got loads and loads of sentences, phi one, phi two, phi three, etc. Now, you might be sitting here thinking, what's a set? She's talking about sets of formulas or sets of sentences. Don't worry, that's going to be the topic of the next video. We will do a little bit of set theory. Looking forward to seeing you then. Cheers.